On the day after the State of the State speech, it's common for a chief executive to take to the road or hit the airwaves to promote the agenda presented in that speech. But these are not common times for Governor Christie, and today he was out of sight. Aside from proposing a longer school day and year and changes to state pensions, there was little in the speech to distract from the GWB story. Former Governor Tom Kane acknowledged that it's hard to avoid. This is the craziest, most unusual kind of a situation and story I've ever seen or ever heard, and I still don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. One of the more memorable sights from the governor's speech came as he made his way into the assembly chambers. That's him shaking hands with his current nemesis, Assemblyman John Wisniewski. Well, I just wanted to make it clear to the governor that this was not about him, this was not about me, this was about getting to the bottom of the questions that we all have about what prompted Bridget Kelly to send that email. In a scandal that has seen new revelations almost daily, these images of the governor and David Wildstein walking and laughing together on September 11th while thousands of unsuspecting motorists sat in an epic traffic jam have generated new buzz, coming just a few days after the governor downplayed his relationship with Wildstein and insisted he hadn't spoken to him during the lane closure crisis. I think some of the stories we've written impute like an emotional relationship and closeness between me and David that doesn't exist. It's hard to believe that he spent that time with the governor in an election year with such a major problem happening on the George Washington Bridge and in Fort Lee, and there was just no discussion at all. Just hard to believe. There is evidence now that the scandal is beginning to have an effect on the governor's Teflon coating. A Quinnipiac University poll out today found Christie's approval rating down to 55 percent from 68 percent in July. His disapproval number is at 38 percent, up from 26 percent in July. Voters familiar with the scandal, 41 percent of them, say Christie knew what his aides were doing, but 50 percent say they don't think he did. The legislative committees that will take this investigation to the next phase will be officially impaneled tomorrow. Today, Assembly Democrats named former Assistant U.S. Attorney Reed Schar as special counsel. Schar, who is a partner at the law firm Jenner & Block, just happens to be the guy who investigated and prosecuted Rod Blagojevich on corruption charges. Blagojevich is the former governor of Illinois. Well, joining us right now is David Cruz. David, I want to back up to one of the things that you brought up in your, your piece here, and that is that picture. Why was there so much concern about this picture, and why is it creating all this ruckus? Well, I think the buzz about it is that the, nothing good can come of this picture because there, depending on how you look at this yeah. scandal, you either see Christie there um, in cahoots with Wildstein and yucking it up while people are stuck in an epic traffic jam, or you see Christie oblivious to what's going on just on the other side of the river. But can we really read that much into just one picture? Well, I think that's what people are doing. Yeah. It, you know, they see them laughing and everything out of context, you know, takes on a, a you know, life of its own. Uh, but the, the people who are talking about it are, you know, on either side of that fence, and that's how they're interpreting it. But neither of the interpretations is good. Right. Let's talk about these investigations, because in my, my, my last count said that there were five individual investigations so far. Why so many? Why can't they all get on one page? It, it's a good question, and everybody seems to say that they want to be able to get to different aspects of it. Although, as you were talking with uh, Assemblyman Bramnick, the assembly probe is pretty broad. So you've got the Assembly, you've got the Senate, you've got the U.S. Attorney, you've got the uh, FBI joining the U.S. Attorney, you've got calls for the Attorney General, you've got calls for the county prosecutor to all investigate. I think everybody wants to get their little pound of flesh, and then there's the whole question of who is going to be running for governor and who's going to take political advantage of and all And quickly, this. because there are so many investigations and so many elements to this story, do you think people are just going to tire of it eventually and say enough is enough? There is a danger of that, of course, and I think, you know, there's a certain aspect that, to running out the clock, you know, and yep. uh, Christie, I think, is interested in running out the clock, but 2016 is going to sneak up on him pretty quick. All right. David Cruz, thank you very much. Yep.